yourself a lawyer you say you know neither now you don't complicate the matter you don't implicate yourself go be grad grad go be fine lawyer go help you know your right teach me the law Miriam this is six months since I supplied you these goods and you are yet to pay 50% of my money cut the crap Jane you are not the only supplier I have business is slow so you have to be patient patient you owe me millions and you want me to remain patient? For how long? I have also paid you millions. Please be patient. Don't you know that I need money to remain in business? So do I, my dear. <laughs> Miriam, I am running out of patience. If I don't get my money now, I'm going to create a scene and everybody's going to come out for both of us. Eh? Create a scene? In my own shop, you? Create a scene? In no point you wear. Will you take your filthy hand off my face, bitch? Who the hell are you to call me bitch? In my own shop. You slapped me. And in spite of the debt you are owing me, you slapped me. And I would do that again if you don't take this your stupid body out of my shop. I'll deal with you. You just wait and Get see. out of here, you fool. Rubbish. There she is. Arrest her. What is the meaning of this, Jane? Madam, follow us to the barracks. Barracks? Which barracks? In the Winston soldier. I said follow us to the barracks! Who the hell are you? Now give me that I'm moving fight this figure of faith now. Out! 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 Jane, why are you doing this to me? Pay me my money and you will get your freedom. I don't have it yet. Then we shall have no other option than to hand you over to the police to charge you for fraud. Soldier! Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Release her and transfer her to the central police station immediately. Let's go. Is it true that you defrauded Miss Jane Johnson the sum of five million naira? No, never. We only did a legitimate business. But you owe her five million naira. Yes, but that's not fraud. Are you trying to teach me my job? Listen, young woman. I will do to you worse than those army boys did to you if you don't tell me the truth. Oh, sir. Inspector Moses. Yes, sir. Meet Barrister Jude Egu. Miss Miriam's lawyer. Counsel, Inspector Moses is the IPO in this case. Okay. Well, Inspector, Counsel is here to secure on bail the release of Miriam. But, sir, 
We have not concluded preliminary investigations. Excuse me. What do you mean by preliminary investigations? My client has been unlawfully detained by the army and now the police for over a month. And they're still talking about preliminary investigations. What is that? Counsel, calm down. We are only doing our job. We have strict directives from above to thoroughly investigate this case. That's simply what we are doing. Really? Well, you and I both know this is beyond your jurisdiction. You have no right to detain a suspect longer than 24 hours. Besides, this is a bailable offence. You can go to court if you feel what we are doing is wrong. Mm. But at the moment, we are still investigating this matter. So your client, I'm sorry, we cannot grant her bail. Okay. I guess I'll see you boys in court then. Judgment. This is an application which is dated the 20th day of June 2022, wherein the applicant seeks the redress under Order 11, Rule 9 of the Fundamental Rights Enforcement Procedure Rules 2009. The application is supported with an affidavit of urgency of, the, of 24 paragraphs, an affidavit in support of 27 paragraphs and several exhibits. I have listened to the Eridal submission of both Lanet Council that for the applicant, and I have equally perused the written addresses filed in support of that application. Likewise, I have perused the counter affidavit of the respondents and listened to the equally brilliant submission of Lanai Council to the respondent. Under 11 Rule 9 of the Fundamental Rights Enforcement Procedural Rules 2009 provides as follows, and I quote, any person who alleges that any of the fundamental rights provided for in the constitutional charter on Human and People's Rights Ratification and Enforcement Act, and to which he is entitled, has been, is being, or is likely to be infringed, may apply to the court in the state wherein the infringement occurs, is likely to, or that is likely to occur. This is what the applicant in this case has done. I refer to the case of Alaji Abdulaziz Adefila Taiwo and His Royal Majesty, or by James Adi, 2014, LPELR 22468CA. The unchallenged evidence before this court shows that the applicant was arrested and held in custody of the first respondent. The evidence shows that the applicant is not subject to the Armed Forces Act or any other military law. This needs no further proof. Evidence further shows that the applicant was detained by the Nigerian police force for a period of 21 days without any opportunity for bail. The defense of both the first and second respondents hold no water, as the Nigerian army lacks the power under Section 217 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended to arrest or to investigate and hold in custody anyone who is not subject to the Armed Forces Act or other military law. Likewise, Sections 4 and Section 84 of the Police Act, although empowers the police to arrest, to investigate, to detect crimes, do not allow the police to hold applicants in detention for an unreasonable period, like, for instance, the 21 days under the guise of investigating a crime. Evidence shows the matter between the applicant and the third respondent was a contractual transaction. We did not result in the commission of a criminal offense. The police therefore acted outside the purview of their schedules of duty by interfering, arresting, and detaining the applicant, and I so hold. See the case of IGP and another, and Agonine and others. LPELR 46431CA, Paheli Moreni KG, Ogumiju JCA, and now JSC, at paragraph 2132. It is obvious that matter between the parties has a contractual transaction for which in any event parties could have ventilated their grievances through the lawful means other than calling on the police to intervene in what is purely a civil matter. The power of the appellant to arrest and detain a citizen of Nigeria such as a first respondent 
can only arise if the first respondent is reasonably suspected of having committed a criminal offence or about to commit a criminal offence. No such suspicion existed. End of quote. I adopt the above submission and reasoning as mine in toto. Regarding the detention of the applicant by the Nigerian army on one hand and the Nigerian police force on the other, it was held in the case of Okonkwo and another, and Adid Duego and others. 2020 LPLR 50581 CA, Pachioma Egondo Mosu Iheme JCA, pages 10 to 13 and paragraphs A to A, which held inter alia, and I quote, section 35.4 of the said constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, provides that any person who is arrested and detained should be taken to court within a reasonable time. It is tried that the police duty to investigate an allegation of crime carries with it the power to arrest and detain suspects. See the case of Fawehimi and IGP. 2002, 7 NWLR, part 767-608. In this instant case, the third responder reported the civil matter to the offices of the Nigerian Army, who took laws into their hands and referred her to the police force after arresting and detaining the applicant. The police was used by the military. Any arrest meant to be done must be done legitimately and in accordance with the laid down rules as provided for in the constitution. See the case of Luna and Commissioner of Police, River State Command, 2010, LPELR 8642CA. Based on the facts adduced before this court, by the applicant. It is evident that the applicant was unlawfully arrested and detained by the Nigerian Army for 14 days and the Nigerian police for, for a period of 21 days, which is a contravention of provisions of Section 35 of 1999 Constitution as amended. And I so hold. It is pertinent to sound this warning again, as has been by court, that Nigerian police force or armed forces are not constitutionally empowered to delve into civil matters such as in this case, Nigerian police is not a debt collector and therefore fined in favor of the application of the applicant. And this application succeeds. It is the order of the court as follows. One, that the arrest and detention of the applicant by the members of the Nigerian Armed and Forces and Nigerian Police Force are unlawful and an infringement of fundamental rights of the applicant. Two, that the first respondent shall pay to the applicant forthwith the sum of 5 million naira as specific and general damages for the unlawful arrest and detention for 14 days. Three, that the second respondent shall pay to the applicant forthwith the sum of 10 million naira as specific and general damages for the detention and arrest of the applicant. And three, that the first, second, and third respondents, the agents, and previous are perpetually restrained from further arresting or detaining or cause to arrest or detain the applicant in this matter. And this is the judgment of this court. Also, the court this is the end of today's proceedings. If this is the end of today's proceedings, the court will rise. Let's come and make case Destra Desene as will be a literal you in Sipir. Don't bother so much. It's just a Latin maxim, which means anywhere someone's right stops is where another's right begin. It's very disheartening to see where breach of contract is taken as a crime. The elements of crime are well established by law. Actus rare, 
guilty act and mens rea, guilty mind. It's mischievous for people to file criminal actions where ordinarily they should have filed a simple claim for breach. The worst is when the police, army, and other law enforcement authorities are dragged into death recovery. The law forbids this, and any arrest, unlawful detention, arising from such entitles the victim to redress for breach of his or her fundamental rights as enshrined in the Constitution. Such victim can apply to the court for enforcement of his or her fundamental rights. If someone is owing you, don't treat them with the police. Get a lawyer and go to court. If the death is unliquidated and certain you can come by way of default summons, that's for magistrate courts, or undefended list for high courts. These are special procedures established by our courts to reward the plaintiff where the defendant has no defense. Don't take the laws into your hands. If you do so, both you and the police, as you can see in this story, have yourselves to blame. The court is no respecter of persons. Simplicity. My name is Kanaya or Kanaya Esquire. Thanks for watching the People's Life. Got to rise up. Got to sit it down. Judge you, judge the matter. Somebody at your back. Because the justice we define, which is justice all the time. Nobody is above the law. Nobody is above the matter. Nobody is above the law. My God, the justice guy in the Objection overruled. I cannot fathom this. Okay, 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 okay. My lord, simple English, my learned colleague here cannot spoke.